thank you uh, very much, uh, Professor Stephen Cook, for being interviewed by me uh, today, and congratulations on the, the on the award. Thank you, thank you very much. S yes, I understand that you were <laughs> you took my courses back. <laughs> In yeah. The 90s. Yeah, in the 90s. Uh, I think first course is probably 87 when I uh, um, took my first year computer science with you. It was so, such an honor. Uh, at the time, I remember wondering, like, uh, this Cook's theorem and then, like, Professor Cook teaching us. <laughs> and then, <laughs> obviously, we, we uh, I took it again in uh, 364, the third year. Uh, uh, yes, uh, then, then I actually complexity. taught the theorem. Right, exactly. Right, and uh, the three set, and uh, I think we can geek out anyone that is listening to this interview in in no time. And I really appreciate uh, the time that you took and 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 teach uh, all of us. Uh, and it's such an honor and wonderful experience to be taught by well, you. Then, the, yeah, I certainly enjoy teaching the class. I have to say. Right. So um, let, let me ask you, uh, how, how do you feel about uh, winning uh, this award uh, after it does come with, I understand, a million dollars over five years? Uh, uh, how are you feeling with uh, that, that well, recognition? Well, I'm feeling great. I, you know, it's really a great honor to, be, to get this award, uh, the uh, top science award um, given out by NSERC. And uh, so certainly... In fact, you know, NSERC has uh, supported my colleagues and me um, very nicely during, during my entire career at the University of Toronto. So and this is the peak. So I really appreciate it. Right. And I'll come to ask you uh, how you're going to uh, plan to spend the money. But let me ask you, uh, in, in the line of what you're saying, uh, since you came to University of Toronto, to, uh, to our luck, and uh, I, I don't know what hit us, but in 1990, if I understand right, in 1970, uh, you came That's to correct. you. You and came to September us. September 1970. Right. Do you remember who hired you? Uh, who who made the great decision to to have you amongst us? I mean, instead of I, I understand Berkeley. I think Berkeley were ha almost had you, but uh, we we lucked well, out. Right? Oh no! Actually, the truth is more complicated. I was in the mathematics. I, my first appointment was in mathematics at Berkeley, and they actually denied me tenure. Yeah, I read and, that, yeah. And uh, so then um, so then I went uh, interviewing, and, and University of Toronto was the most attractive interview. That Yeah, the department chair was Tom Hall then, and he was a very um, competent and uh, uh, persuasive <laughs> chair. <laughs> so it was clear he was building an excellent... Uh, Department, of course, this is the you know Toronto had one of the first computer science departments. Uh, computer science wasn't really a recognized discipline then. Yeah. In 1970, and and Toronto got in there early, and Tom Hall certainly played an important role. He wrote, he hired a number of outstanding people. Yeah. Spe speaking about in those early days, as uh, this is by sheer co coincidence, uh, Steve, if you don't mind me calling you Steve. I was interviewing uh, Professor Kelly Gottlob uh, just last week, uh, seven days ago. Uh, and, That's right. Uh, and, uh, the list, he was there too, for uh, sure. He right. was one of the founders. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, I think he he uh, helped us uh, buy the bought the second uh, electronic computers uh, in the world, and uh, uh, at the time. So um, I, I asked him. Uh, I asked Kelly uh, among a list of uh, computer computer science giants. Uh, uh, Donald Newf was one, and then I asked his view about you, uh, uh, Steve. <laughs> and that was such a sheer coincidence. And he has some really nice words. Uh, and it truly, it's our luck to, uh, as the University of Toronto graduate uh, to have you uh, teach us. And uh, yeah, it's it's yeah honor to have you in uh, teaching um, two two classes. So let me ask you about the P versus NP problem now. So okay. uh, I remember uh, at the time uh, being young and naive, I thought, oh, I, I think that was like not too long after I learned uh, the Gödel's uh, proof logic system and uh, the thing that we can prove this and that. I naively went to your office, and you were so kind in I think spending a few minutes uh, entertaining this entertaining me <laughs> thinking that I might have a solution to the P versus NP problem. So I want to pose it to you now. So um, you have done 
so much research, and according to Kelly, you are you are the cutting edge. You are the the leading researcher, still the re- leading researcher in this field. Are we going to see a solution one way or another, proof or disproof or proof that we this cannot be ever proved? Like, are we going to see it in the next five, ten, or maybe twenty years? Yeah, a lot of people ask that question. So um, I think it's become coming increasingly clear the problem is extremely difficult, and so I'm I'm now convinced, and I think a lot of people are convinced that it, it's not going to be solved in the next ten years, and and maybe not for for quite a bit longer. It will eventually be resolved. I I feel. After all, we know Fermat's last theorem was open for four hundred years before it was solved, but it was solved. Mm-hmm. So, and so here's the thing. You know, the top top mathematicians, fields medalists, have worked on the problem and and given up. So uh, we know it's hard. Are we are we um, missing some fundamental understanding or insight to uh, breakthrough tools, or are we slowly chipping at the problem? Like we are building. Uh, I think you and your former uh, uh, PhD students or your re- research. Like I think you co- you still you're actively working in this area. Uh, what what kind of thing? we need to crack it uh, I, get, I think in, in time uh, maybe not well, the next I, five I, ten years. I, I can get two answers we're, um, there, there is, there's not many well there's one program I, I would say that uh, um, algebraic geometrists are, are, are trying to work on that may conceivably lead to something you know in the next uh, few decades so there is one sort of credible mathematical program that might lead to a solution. I'm not part of that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what what we complexity theorists do? We talk about lots of related problems mm-hmm. and uh, things like conditions. Of where we try to identify methods that that won't work, so we can rule out ways of doing it, and then we can give conditional. Um, proofs, assuming this or that, we mm-hmm. can prove be not equal to MD. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're, also, they're also related, a lot of related, uh, even simpler questions. P versus NP is, is the top one, but there, there are lots of each much simpler questions we can't resolve, and we're working on them. Mm-hmm. So, so the working is to uh, prove that it is not equals MP, or are we trying to like the Kurt Gödel, good old Kurt Gödel, thinking, uh, tr- trying to wipe out the problem, saying, "Hey, this is never going to be decidable." Uh, well, I mean, people have speculated that that means given, you know, by that you mean you given the standard axioms that that we use in mathematics, like zermelo frankel set theory. And it's conceivable that the problem is independent of that, meaning it could be neither proved or disproved. But but I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. I, I I think it is. It can be resolved. It's mm-hmm. just going to be very very difficult. Right. So so maybe in our lifetime, right, uh, Professor? Cole, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe in in some people's lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very vague mathematician uh, talk, uh, <laughs> I sense. But then I guess we we have no, I've seen uh, Fermat's last uh, theorem taking uh, exactly. may, maybe a few yeah. few more pages than the the margin of the book uh, to proof, and a few more years than than Fermat has uh, thought, I suppose. That's right. It took a lot more than that. It took a development of a whole set of theories to just begin to crack it. So. Right. So, so you won the Turing Award in uh, 1982 and, uh, and this latest uh, award in, uh, well, now tw- 2013. Um, my question is, uh, now this award comes with, I understand, a million dollars and over five years of research uh, funding. Um, do you have plans already, like, for, for the million? Like, are you going to, uh, what, what are you thinking of uh, doing with it? Well, it, uh, I, I take it as an award to our theory group, our theory research group in the computer science department. I have some very bright colleagues, mm-hmm. and it's gonna we'll we'll use it to support our graduate students and to uh, hire postdoctoral fellows, and uh, and and visitors. 
Right. And travel, of course. We travel to conferences. Mm -hmm. So so it would be a great way to actually, this award would be a great occasion to, to announce to the world that we've got some funding. Uh, um, come and, and visit us <laughs> and, and maybe like uh, jo join the faculty. <laughs> um, that's right. Joining the faculty is a different question. True, true. O obviously. <laughs> but visiting scholar <laughs> we're, we're, or something. <laughs> we're not, the theory group is one competing. We have a very broad and excellent group, uh, number of research groups in the department. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we may hire a theory person at some point too. But we're talking about um, visiting appointments and postdoctoral fellows and, and graduate student support. Right. So uh, thanks again, uh, Professor Koko and Steve, for uh, um, being interviewed by, by me. And, and truly, as a former student of yours, uh, it's wonderful uh, seeing the recognition that you've got. Uh, and, and like, yeah, this is, uh, uh, to me, as a U of T grad, uh, I think we definitely lucked out. <laughs> it, 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 me reading the history of you joining us, uh, like, we, it could have gone the wrong way, and, and you would be in, at some other university, and it w I would have never met you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, by, by the way, you know, it was, it was just six months after I arrived at Toronto that I came up with the idea wow of deep wow <laughs> let, let me let me follow up on that so six months after you came to uh toronto you came up with an idea, idea what triggers you uh you, you probably have talked about li this a lot but um let, let me in your uh, own words like how, what trigger your thought on on thinking up that problem i think independently of the another russian uh, uh mathematician or uh, computer scientist well yes yes leon at levin um who who was a actually was just a graduate student uh, in, in Russia at the time. Of course, this is the Iron Curtain under the Soviet Union. And he, uh, he has thought of essentially the same idea. Mm -hmm. and, but the, there was not so much communication between the Soviet Union and the rest of the world then. So right. the ideas didn't get back and forth for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. so now, but as far as, far as uh, the way what I thought about my... Uh, it was really, I uh, was a graduate, my days as a graduate student in the 60s at, at Harvard that, and my uh, advisor, Hao Wang, was a logician, mm -hmm. and he was studying, um, he was working on problems based on, on Alan Turing's theorem um, of, of the undecidability of the Entscheidungs problem, this is the decision problem for um in logic for logical formulas uh, in predicate calculus mm -hmm. are they satisfiable or not anyway it was that was the that was in my mind and and that was very much related to my theorem what's called cook the cook 11 theorem now which was that um the propositional satisfiability problem is np complete uh, but but anyway that's my Mm -hmm. the, the the idea was due to, well, came from Alan Turing. Mm -hmm. And the creative, uh, I guess, spark to for you what, was what? The, say, say again? The creative spark that leads you into this brand new area or brand new way of thinking of the issue and, and the NTP complete problem itself too, right? Yeah, it was the notion of NTP completeness. Yeah, that's really the importance of, 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 of what I did what Levin did, and actually Dick Carp, who followed on to to my paper. Um, it's it's the notion of NP complete problems, and uh, you know what they are. And, right, um, the equivalency of the like the one you prove one is hard, and the, the another one is hard, and they are kind of related. And then the whole well, thing you can, the way to you can break one. If you can find an efficient solution for one, you found an efficient solution for all of them. Right, and. and so yeah, that was the key notion. Right, the transformation and yeah, the, the key notion of that, and and you came up, came up with that after you came to uh, Toronto. You say right. six months. Wow, that that's amazing. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Steve, uh, for talking with me uh, this uh, to, to now. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Okay. You, you have. Done, thank you. You have a great day. Uh, thank you very yeah. much. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now.